Hello Bonanza fans. Today we're going to talk about lean of peak operations. How we fly a lean of peak, how it is different from ridge of peak from the engine's perspective, what advantages flying lean of peak has, and also when ridge of peak may be a better choice. We'll look at some of the theory in a moment, but first I want to show you in flight how we make lean of peak happen and what results we can observe. You may be surprised how easy it is to switch the engine from ridge of peak over to lean of peak. It takes just one single control, the often neglected mixture knob. To many, lean of peak is a mysterious topic, with some promise of fuel savings, but at the cost of damaging the engine. You'll burn up your valves. Aft gas is cheaper than an engine overhaul, are some of the counter arguments you may hear in the upward. Let's find out what is fact and what is fiction. And at the end, we'll do a little math to see just how much the fuel savings can add up to over time. Right now, we're in cruise at 9,000 feet. The outside air is plus four degrees Celsius. The throttle is wide open, giving me 20 inches of manifold pressure. And for the moment, I'm flying ridge of peak with my airspeed indicator showing 143 knots indicated and 165 knots true airspeed. We have a bit of a tailwind, so over the ground, we're showing 180 knots. A couple of instruments I want you to pay attention to are the fuel flow, that's the right half of this instrument here, showing how many gallons of fuel are going into the engine per hour, and we can control that, of course, directly with the mixture control. Push the mixture forward for more fuel, or pull it back for less fuel. And second, this one here, which is the digital engine monitor. It has bar graphs, where each bar represents one of the six cylinders of my engine, and each bar shows two different values. The top of the bar shows the exhaust gas temperature, EGT. How hot is the gas that's pushed out of the cylinder after the combustion event? The bottom portion of each bar represents the cylinder head temperature, or CHT, showing us how hot the metal of the cylinder is. And then we have these two numbers here at the bottom, 1349 and 305. Those are precise digital readouts of EGT and CHT for one of the six cylinders. You see a little dot here under the number 5, meaning that the EGT and CHT readouts are valid for cylinder number 5. So my number 5 cylinder currently has an exhaust gas temperature of 1345 degrees Fahrenheit and a cylinder head temperature of 305 degrees Fahrenheit. I can also turn my engine monitor with this switch here from EGT and CHT readouts to fuel-related readouts, showing us the fuel flow. And as you can see here, we're pushing about 15.5, 15.6 gallons per hour through the engine at this time. And I can cycle through a few more related values, such as this one here, showing me how many miles per gallon we're traveling. 11.7 miles per gallon right now. Similar to the gas mileage of your car, except this one here is in nautical miles. Now let's go lean of peak. While I walk you through the process, I want you to watch this readout here of the exhaust gas temperature while I'm leaning the mixture and reducing the fuel flow. The mixture knob is down here, so I'm reaching for this knob and slowly I'm reducing the amount of fuel going into the engine. The engine sounds no different than before, but what you can see is the mechanical fuel flow gauge here is slowly going down and the exhaust gas temperature for cylinder number five is going up. And I'll just keep doing this. 1440, 43, 44, 47. And now, watch this. I keep reducing the fuel flow with the mixture knob, but the exhaust gas temperature is reaching a maximum, reaching a peak EGT here at 1445 degrees, and is now actually reversing to lower values. And that reversal tells us we're now on the lean side of peak. The EGT is still going down further, and I'm going to try to lean the mixture to a point where we get an EGT of about 1420, so about 25 degrees below the peak we saw earlier. And we'll see what that does. Okay, a couple of minutes have passed, giving me time for a sip of coffee and time for the airplane to adjust to this new power setting on the lean side of peak EGT. So what has changed? The EGT is still at about 1420, which is where we had set it, 25 degrees below the peak EGT we observed. And we call that 25 degrees lean of peak. Looking at my instruments, I can see the true airspeed is now 155 knots, so we lost 10 knots. Our indicated airspeed is 135 knots. 
Ground speed is now showing as uh, 171 knots. Our fuel flow has of course gone down because we pulled the mixture knob back, now showing 12.0, 12.1 gallons per hour. And let's also look at the miles per gallon. Remember, that was 11.7 miles per gallon earlier when we were reached a peak. We're now seeing much better gas mileage, 14.3, 14.4 miles per gallon. So we are a little slower than we were at a peak, but we will use less fuel to get to our destination. Also, our cylinder head temperature, or CHT, which was 305 degrees earlier, is now stable at 285 degrees, 20 degrees cooler than it was when we were at a peak. That by itself is a really nice improvement, because when it comes to CHT, cooler is better. And that is all it takes. We're now lean of peak, simply by pulling the mixture back while watching the EGT. And at the expense of a little bit of speed, I was able to reduce fuel burn and increase the range in gas mileage and reduce the cylinder head temperature by quite a bit. Now let's take a look at what's going on inside the cylinder and try to explain why all these changes are happening. When we use the mixture control, we change how much fuel is going into the engine without changing how much air goes in. So it's the ratio of fuel to air that we change with the mixture control. When a lot of fuel goes into the engine, we call that a rich mixture. When little fuel goes into the engine, we call that a lean mixture. With the mixture control, we directly adjust fuel flow, expressed in gallons per hour or pounds per hour, and the engine will actually run fine over a pretty large range of fuel flows while keeping other things, like RPM and manifold pressure, constant. One thing that changes as a result of our mixture of fuel flow setting is the exhaust gas temperature, or short EGT. That's the temperature of the gas coming out of the cylinder after the combustion cycle, and we measure EGT with little temperature probes in the exhaust stack, such as this one here. There's a separate probe installed for each cylinder, so for my six-cylinder engine, I'm dealing with six separate exhaust gas temperatures. For the moment though, let's just look at one cylinder and one EGT and ignore the rest. In the flight you just saw, we were at first flying with the rich mixture. When I gradually reduced the fuel flow with the mixture control, remember how the exhaust gas temperature slowly increased. And then, after reaching a peak temperature, it decreased as I further reduced fuel flow. So in one continuous sweep of the mixture control, from very rich to very lean, the EGT first climbs, then reaches a peak, and from there it goes down again. That's what is depicted in this graph, which shows on the horizontal axis the fuel flow you set, and on the vertical axis the EGT that directly results from that fuel flow. Note that there are no numbers on this chart. The absolute numbers are not that important for what I'm trying to explain. What is important is, that there's a fuel flow somewhere in this range at which a maximum EGT or a peak EGT is reached. We'll mark this with a bold line here in the chart. From there, whether we make the mixture richer or leaner, the resulting EGT will be lower either way. Along those lines, there are no good or bad numbers for exhaust gas temperature. The specific temperature value itself is not directly responsible for whether you're going fast or slow, or whether you're running the engine in a way that supports longevity or not. Instead, think of the EGT as something we can see directly in the cockpit, which tells us where on this graph we're operating. In other words, are we at peak EGT, are we rich of peak, or are we lean of peak? And as pilots, we have complete control over where on this chart we run the engine, simply by adjusting the mixture control. Watch the EGT readout while you change the mixture, when you're leaning the mixture and the EGT increases, we must be rich of peak. If the EGT decreases, we must be lean of peak. So the EGT helps us determine where we are on this range from very rich to very lean. Next, we're going to add two additional parameters to this chart. The cylinder head temperature and the power produced, measured in horsepower. Like before, we're keeping this generic, so there are no absolute numbers. Instead, look for peaks, inclines and declines, and how steep those inclines and declines are. Let's start with horsepower. The amount of power produced by the engine cannot be directly read from any instrument in our cockpit, but it can be measured on a specialized engine test stand. Plus, you can observe a change of airspeed as a result of the power change. More power means more speed. 
As you can see here, the power curve is fairly flat with mixture settings that are on the rich side of peak EGT. Peak horsepower is achieved at a point somewhat rich of peak EGT. That's the point where your engine develops the maximum possible power. And if all else were equal, that would be a great place to be. But all else is not equal. And as you'll soon see, the point of best power is in fact quite often a very bad place to be. On the lean of peak side, engine horsepower output falls off noticeably as you lean the mixture, as you can see from the steeper angle of the curve on the left side, the lean side of the graph. Finally, I'm adding the cylinder head temperature, or CHT, to the chart. This is the temperature of the metal of the cylinder, and it's important for two reasons, both of which are related to the longevity of the cylinder. First, all metals lose strength with increasing temperature, so a cooler CHT is better. It means the metal of the cylinder is stronger and more durable. Second, part of what creates the heat inside the cylinder, besides just the high temperature of combustion, is the pressure inside the cylinder resulting from the expanding fuel-air mixture during the combustion event. Those two things, high pressure and decreased strength of the metal, are the enemy of our cylinders. If they are too high, they can weaken and damage the cylinder, so anything we can do to keep CHTs low is a good thing. One important thing to know about CHT is that it changes slowly, as opposed to the immediate changes we see for power and EGT when changing the mixture. The reason for the slow CHT changes is the thermal mass of the cylinder. It takes time for all that metal to warm up or cool down in response to changes of the combustion process on the inside. Remember this when you're looking for changes on your engine monitor. The EGT readout follows the mixture changes pretty much instantly, whereas the CHT is trailing behind and can take a couple of minutes to stabilize at a new value. Now I'm going to try to map the two scenarios we saw in our flight earlier on this chart. We started with an EGT of 1345 degrees Fahrenheit and a CHT of 305 degrees Fahrenheit. Horsepower is not directly known. Instead, I'll use the indicated airspeed in our case 143 knots, as the one thing directly obtainable in the cockpit that's related to horsepower. All this was the result of my mixture setting, or fuel flow, which as you saw in the video was 15.5 gallons per hour. When I started to lean, the EGT reached a peak of 1445 degrees. Further leaning resulted in around 1420 degrees. The CHT then stabilized at 285 degrees and the indicated airspeed at 135 knots. All this with a fuel flow of 12.1 gallons per hour. Comparing these two scenarios, we're going a little slower when lean of peak, but we're also burning quite a bit less fuel. We will arrive at our destination a few minutes later, but with significantly more fuel left in the tanks. So for maximizing range, lean of peak is a great way to fly. In addition, our cylinder head temperature is lower, which as you remember means we have stronger metal and less pressure inside the cylinder which are good things for the engine. One more addition to this chart. When pilots talk about power settings for the engines, they often express that in how many degrees rich of peak or how many degrees lean of peak they are, rather than fuel flow. For example, in the rich of peak case shown on the right side of this chart, at 15.5 gallons per hour fuel flow, our EGT was 1345 degrees, which is 100 degrees less than the peak EGT of 1445 degrees. Therefore, we call this power setting 100 degrees rich of peak. The equivalent for the lean of peak case was a temperature of 1420, or 25 degrees below the peak of 1445. So in this case, we were running 25 degrees lean of peak. As you can probably tell, I'm a big fan of lean of peak for the fuel savings and the cooler engine temperatures. But is there a time when rich of peak is better? Yes, there is. Anytime you want the best possible power or speed, rich of peak is the way to go, such as for takeoff, for the best rate of climb, or when your time of arrival on a particular flight is more important than your fuel cost. Just make sure you are far enough on the rich side during high power settings to avoid the high CHTs and the high internal cylinder pressures that I mentioned. On takeoff, that means full throttle and mixture full rich unless leaning is needed for high density altitudes. Thinking in terms of degrees rich of peak or degrees lean of peak is often more meaningful than the fuel flow. Fuel flow alone doesn't tell us very much. 
if I only throw out a number, say 14 gallons per hour, depending on the engine I have, depending on the altitude I fly at, depending on how warm the outside air is, depending on my manifold pressure and RPM, those 14 gallons per hour could put me at peak EGT, on the lean side of peak or on the rich side of peak. There's just no way of knowing from the number 14 alone. On the other hand, saying I'm running 50 degrees lean of peak clearly puts us on the left side of the chart, whereas you can find 150 degrees rich of peak on the right side. For navigating this chart, degrees rich of peak and degrees lean of peak is very helpful. I'm going to use this terminology now when we talk about power settings that should be avoided due to the thermal and mechanical stress they put on the engine. Thinking back of the flight you saw earlier, I was in cruise at 9000 feet with a wide open throttle resulted in 20 inches of manifold pressure on my normally aspirated engine. The engine was making about 65% of its rated power and at that power or below, there is no mixture setting that will produce abnormal stress on the engine. You can therefore vary the mixture and fly lean of peak for best economy, slightly rich of peak for best speed, or a bit farther rich of peak for still good speed and cooler CHTs, all without fear for your engine. At higher power settings, things are different. That's because of the higher pressure inside the cylinder during combustion. The combination of high internal cylinder pressure and high temperature is especially bad for your engine. So at high power settings, you should avoid a mixture that puts you in the area of this chart with high CHTs. Practically speaking, at high power settings, you should be at least 150 degrees rich of peak when on the rich side of peak, or at least 50 degrees lean of peak when on the lean side of peak. In between is an area sometimes referred to as the red box. That's the area you should not operate in. The red box gets smaller when the engine develops less power, for example, when I climb with a normally aspirated engine, and completely disappears around 65% power and below. Because of the red box, it is recommended to make the transition from rich of peak to lean of peak quickly, thereby avoiding spending more time than necessary in the harmful area associated with the red box. So instead of reducing the mixture slowly from rich to lean, like I did during the flight I showed you earlier, I did that to show you the effect the mixture had on EGT, you should pull the mixture in one quick motion. Not so far as to stop the engine, of course, but far enough to get on the lean side of peak. You can then find peak EGT by enriching the mixture until EGT peaks, then lean back to the desired number of degrees lean of peak. That is better for your engine than looking for peak EGT from the rich side of peak. Let me reiterate something about the red box because it is so important for you to understand. It is perfectly fine to run an engine outside of the red box on either the ridge or the lean side of peak. But some people have gotten into trouble running the engine somewhat lean, but not lean enough to be outside of the red box. Again, because of the mechanical and thermal stress, this is not a good place for the engine. You can quickly transition through the red box to get from one side to the other, but don't dwell here. If you're flying lean of peak and your CHTs are rising to an uncomfortably high level, your mixture is not lean enough and you thus need to lean further. If that doesn't help, go full rich. Lean of peak, when done right, results in lower CHTs than a comparable rich of peak power settings, as you've seen in the flight video earlier. And if that's not what you're getting, something isn't quite right. You may have heard that not all engines can be run lean of peak and that is unfortunately a true statement. Why is that? Everything I've told you so far is accurate and applicable to virtually every cylinder ever made for any piston engine. When lean of peak doesn't work, it comes from the fact that we have more than one cylinder per engine, all connected to the same crankshaft. And while the idea is to give each cylinder the same amount of air and fuel, in reality there will be some differences from cylinder to cylinder. To understand why that's important for running lean of peak, Let's go back to our chart. Let's assume that we have a four cylinder engine. Everything we reviewed earlier still applies, but it applies to each of the four cylinders separately in four slightly different places. Here's what that might look like when flying rich of peak. Now I pull the mixture control back to bring all four cylinders to the lean side of peak. Look at the power produced by each cylinder. In the rich of peak case, the power output of each cylinder is about the same, and that's because of how flat the power curve is on this side of the chart. 
Now look at the same information on the lean of peak side. Because the power curve is steeper here, our four cylinders now produce power with a lot more variation. And that variation in power between the cylinders causes vibration or roughness when those four cylinders operate on the same crankshaft. If the cylinders are spread over too large a range on this chart, you will likely not be able to operate lean of peak. So what can you do if your engine becomes too rough to run before you are fully on the lean of peak side? If you have a carbureted engine, your options are limited. Carbureted engines unfortunately tend to suffer from somewhat uneven mixture distribution and about the only thing that can make things better is to apply a little bit of carb heat. The warmer air will help create a more even mixture distribution which may be even enough to run lean of peak. If you have a fuel injected engine, there's a better option. Since there's a separate fuel injection nozzle for each cylinder, it is possible to adjust individual injectors, thereby making the range over which the cylinders spread out in this chart much smaller. GAMI is the name of the company that makes these injectors, and if you have a fuel injected engine that isn't happily running lean of peak, odds are their GAMI injectors can help. One other thing, when we say something like lean to 40 degrees lean of peak, given that the cylinders reach peak EGT at different times, which cylinder are we referring to? The answer is the last cylinder to reach peak EGT on their journey from rich to lean as shown on your digital engine monitor. In my Bonanza, that happens to be cylinder number five. And that is why I had set my engine monitor to provide the readout for cylinder five in the flight you saw earlier. Different engine monitors offer different ways to identify when each cylinder crosses peak EGT. So consult its manual to understand how to best do that with your instrument. The good news is you'll only have to go through this exercise once because it will always be the same cylinder in your aircraft with your engine. At the beginning, I promised you to quantify the fuel savings from flying lean of peak. Let's use the expected life of the engine for that and assume it has a TBO of 2,000 hours. Let's be conservative and assume that we only spend 75% of those 2,000 hours going lean of peak, leaving the rest for takeoff, climb, or other rich of peak operations. Remember, rich of peak, we saw 15.5 gallons per hour earlier, as opposed to 12 gallons per hour when lean of peak. Times 1,500, that adds up to 5250 gallons of saved fuel over the life of the engine. And with an average price of $4.87 in the US for a gallon of aft gas, according to airnav.com, that means you saved fuel in the amount of $25,567. In other words, when your engine reaches TBO, half of the overhaul is free, thanks to flying lean of peak, just from the fuel savings. Lean of peak isn't the best way to operate all the time, but for my kind of flying it's the best way to operate a lot of the time. My fuel cost has gone down and my engine is running cooler, saving money on every flight and reducing stress on the engine. If this video has gotten you interested in trying Lean of Peak yourself, I suggest that you team up with a flight instructor who is already familiar with Lean of Peak in your type of airplane and with your type of engine. Together you can validate or tailor what you've seen here as needed to make it right and safe for your airplane. If you would like to learn more, there are many other resources available to teach lean of peak and engine management in general. The two best ones, in my opinion, are John Deacon's Pelican's Purge column, available free of charge on the internet, and an engine management class called Advanced Pilot, which covers this and many related topics over the course of a weekend in a live seminar. Thanks for watching, fly safe, and see you next time. As you can probably tell, I'm a big fan of Liga. The EGT is still at about 1420, which we had set with the mixture knob, 25 degrees. And at the end, we'll do a little math to see, to see just how much fuel savings can add. And I'll just keep doing this. The f here. And at the expense of a little bit of speed, I was able to reduce fuel. So we are a little slower than we were at HFP, but we will. So we are a little slower. Let's go.
Shut the f up, guys. Is to avoid the high CHTs and high internal pressure. Somewhat lean, but not lean enough to be outside of the red box.